HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll tell you all about the second annual Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill Ceremony. Courtney will get you filled in with upcoming HCAM programming with the HCAM Insider. And we have highlights from an exciting Hopkinton High School Powder Puff football match between the classes of 2017 and 2018. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. The Young Gunners took the trophy and bragging rights, winning their ninth Hopkinton Boosters Turkey Bowl. The annual game took place the Friday after Thanksgiving. Hillers football pose for their annual team shot. The team closed out their season in Ashland on Thanksgiving Day with the annual Turkey Day game versus the Ashland Clockers. Things were close early on, but the Clockers pulled away and grabbed the 35-12 victory. Hopkinton finished the season 4-7 overall. For the 16th year, the Woodville Rod and Gun Club baked and deep fried over 800 pounds of turkey, serving over 140 plates on Thanksgiving to the public for free. Hopkinton Scout Troop 1 was assisted by the Hillers baseball team in setting up for their annual Christmas tree sale. The sale takes place in the lot of the former Colella's, which now houses CVS and Marty's Liquors. The sale will continue daily up until Christmas or all the trees sell out. Any purchase of a tree or any of the wreaths for sale from the Scouts will go towards funding for the Scout Troop. After taking home their second state championship in the past three seasons, Hillers Volleyball hosted their end of the season banquet. The team finished the season 22-2 overall and took home the state championship with a victory over Notre Dame Academy in the championship round. See many more pictures from the banquet at our sceneinhopkinton.org. Several Hopkinton High School alumni were honored during the second annual Top of the Hill ceremony. Among those honored, George Brown, class of 1898, Walter Brown, class of 1923, Fred Harris, class of 1963, Michael Shepard, class of 1963, Kelly Grill, class of 1983, Sonny P. Bevel, class of 1993, and Libby McDonald Bischoff, class of 1995. Before being honored during the evening ceremony, the alumni got a tour around the school and a chance to talk with students and staff. See many more pictures at sceneinhopkinton.org. Unibank celebrated their one year anniversary, and to celebrate that anniversary, they donated to many local Hopkinton organizations. So in celebration of our one year anniversary at Unibank and Hopkinton, um, our way of giving back to the community, we chose seven nonprofit organizations. Um, and our kickoff uh, for our giving program, we asked members of the community to do their part by coming into our branch to vote uh, for their favorite nonprofit organization. And there were seven uh, nonprofits. There were 
levels. Uh, the first prize winner was $5,000. Second prize would be $2,500 contribution. And third prize was 1000 And the other organizations would get $500. So everybody was a winner. So we did our wrap up um, after two months of voting uh, on November 15, um, marked our final date to vote. And we had a celebration in our branch on Wednesday evening to announce the winners. And the grand prize winner was Project Just Because. Our second prize winner was the Hopkins and Public Library. Third prize was Serenity House. Um, Michael Carter Lisner Respite Center got $500, as well as the Hopkins and Education Foundation and the Hopkins Center for the Arts and the Hopkins Senior Center. So everyone was a winner in this uh, voting contest. It was wonderful to be part of this. Uh, Unibank had us here for their grand opening and has been supportive since they walked into this town. And to have them be able to have our um, supportive people come in here and vote was just an opportunity we were just really excited about. And I understand uh, Unibank has some uh, programs that help uh, Project Just Because. Can you talk about some of those? Well, right here we're standing in front of a tree, and this is our giving tree. Um, this time of year we have a holiday program, and we do um, approximately 15,000 children. So they support us by having this tree so that people can take hearts and fulfill the wishes of the children. Hopkinton High School hosted the second annual Top of the Hill ceremony. The program, organized by Assistant Principal Josh Hanna, was put together to award Hopkinton High School alumni who have made tremendous accomplishments or contributions to society. Hopkinton High School hosted the second annual Top of the Hill ceremony. The program honors alumni for exceptional achievements and contributions to society. The program is sponsored by the Hopkinton Parent Teacher Association, the Hopkinton Education Foundation, and Hopkinton High School. This year, the program honored 1898 graduate George Brown, 1923 graduate Walter Brown, 1963 graduate Fred Harris, 1963 graduate Michael Shepard, 1983 graduate Kelly Grill, 1993 graduate Sonny P. Bevel, and 1995 graduate Libby McDonald Bischoff. Hopkinton has given so much more to the world of sports, both in America and abroad, and I'd like to think that, that it should be, it all started here. And it started with these two men you're honoring this evening for achievements and contributions to society. George Fee Brown, my grandfather, Walter A. Brown, my uncle. Uh, they were two of America's finest sportsmen, founding fathers and pioneers, and so much that was good in the world of sport in the first 60 years of the 20th century came about because of them. Well, it, it's always a thrill for me to talk about my, my family. I uh, only spent the first five years of my life here, did not come to Hopkinton High myself. But to, to see the, the love and respect that the town still has for my grandfather and my uncle, both of whom have been gone for many, many decades. It, it's just a thrill, and to be able to retell their story to another generation of people, it, it's a wonderful experience. I will never get tired of it. Now, I'm guessing that uh, you probably got a lot of questions from the students here today about your uh, relatives. Actually, uh, no, I didn't. No. The only question I had was uh, one student asked me, did you get free tickets? <laughs> and, and of course I did. And I. I said, uh, I tried to drop a remark and said that the biggest celebrity I ac actually met along the way was Rin Tin Tin. And I got a total bunch of blank looks. Who the devil is Rin Tin Tin? And these kids aren't going to know who Rin Tin Tin was, but he was one of Hollywood's biggest stars. In fact, he almost won an Oscar when they first started the Oscars, but they didn't want to give it to an animal. In 2002, he received the William M. Kennedy Award from the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. And in 2010, he was awarded the Harold E. Saunders Award by the American Society of Naval Engineers. He has received the Maine Maritime Academy Outstanding Alumni Award, as well as an honorary doctorate of science from MMA. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Fred Harris to the stage to receive his award. My wife and I could not think of a better place to grow up than Hopkinton slash Woodville. Um, it was a small town here at the time, 
but a progressive one filled with wonderful people who were kind to me and despite many, well, let's call them adventures. <laughs> the, pe the, the people of this town, my parents and my teachers set excellent examples of leadership and showed me the importance of setting higher educational and personal goals. The leadership skills I learned here in particular became essential in my career and my life. Mike spent seven years in the Marine Corps, including a tour as an infantry pl platoon commander in Vietnam. After receiving a master's degree from Pepperdine University, he taught at Weston High School for seven years. Having a lifelong interest in construction, he and his brother Bob built residential additions as well as new homes, primarily in town. Small towns like ours thrive <clears throat> when its citizens step up and serve, and they always give back. I found that the best jobs in life are the jobs you don't get paid for. Being a parent, being a selectman, being on the conservation commission, being on a building committee, all those jobs, being a coach at soccer, being a coach at softball, baseball, they're all jobs you never get paid for, but in the end, as you look back at it from the 70 year perspective, those are the best jobs you've ever had. Um, and that's why I, I tried to encourage the kids today to get involved and, and go out there because that's how small towns like ours flourish. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have much more from the top of the hill ceremony, highlights from the annual Powder Puff football game, plus much more. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen. And they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HCAM News. During the Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill ceremony, Hopkinton Center for the Arts director and Hopkinton High School 1983 alum, Kelly Grill was honored for her many contributions to the Hopkinton community. By 1998, living in nearby Milford, she reconnected with her ESL friends and began to produce community theater again in churches, the Hopkinton Historical Society, Hopkinton schools, or anywhere they could find space. Together, they started writing again, and in 2004, wrote a musical review to raise funds for the Cultural Arts Alliance of Hopkinton, which would be used towards the renovation of a dairy barn into an art center. It was the culmination of a dream that began in the drama and band rooms of Hopkinton High School. She now feels privileged to work in a place that fosters and celebrates the creative spirit in every individual, and still holds a special affection for working with high school students. Will Kelly please come up and receive her award? Um, when I think about Hopkinton, um, I think about uh, how we came to be here, first of all. Um, it was actually my father who um, was a teacher here for uh, a short time. Uh, he came in, I think it was 1969, around that time, to uh, teach in Hopkinton, which was the junior high and high school, and he taught math. And just before he came to teach here, he was actually teaching in LA, in California. And so it was a very, very different environment to come to Hopkinton from <laughs> teaching in L.A. And when he taught in L.A., you know, the kids were a little different, a little rougher there. Um, so his first day on the job here in Hopkinton, one of his students came up to him and said, um, Mr. Westcott, can I go out and uh, feed my horse at lunchtime? And he said, what? 
are you talking, <laughs> what? And, no, I, I go to the Terry barn next door and I go and uh, feed my horse. The teachers let me do it, it's okay. And he said, all right, listen. I'll let you go, but I'm telling you, if you do anything that gets me in trouble, you are in big trouble. So he watched this girl, and sure enough, she walked outside and fed her horse at lunch and came back. And he went home that evening, and he said to my mother, any town where a young girl can go feed her horse at lunchtime, that's where I want to live. And so we moved here. Sunny is also a member of the Board of Advisors of Thompson Island Outward Bound Education Center, an organization that creates programs to provide Boston's youth with hands-on opportunities in STEM learning and facilitates experiences to help the young people realize their potential. For my journey, basketball has been a big part of it uh, in high school and beyond. Uh, in high school, it was amazing to see the support that our community engendered for, for our, t our town and our team. Uh, I did play my last basketball game in high school at the Boston Garden Parquet. Um, I had the misfortune of opening one of the books in the library and the first picture I saw was a picture of me crying after that game uh, because it was not the, the end result that we were hoping for. And as I look back and reflected and, and think about you know, what got me here today and the support that we had, I realized that you know, that was a girls basketball team in you know, the early 90s. And you know, the boys were playing basketball and there were other games and it wasn't about a girls team or the boys team, it was just about a sport and a town that people were rallying behind. It was great to come back, it's been a while, it's my first time in the building seeing all the new changes, uh, brought back a lot of memories and it was great, it was great to talk to the students, they had some wonderful questions and really enjoyed it. Great to call attention to the positive that's out there, um, so I was just very happy to be part of that. Her scholarship has been supported by fellowships at Yale University, the Massachusetts Historical Society, the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum and Research Center, the Maine Women Writers Collection, and the Center for Creative Photography. Libby is a cultural historian who is passionate about making history exciting and accessible to the general public. As I was driving around this afternoon and, and found a town much changed <laughs> and a high school in a different building and an art wing instead of an art classroom. I can't get over the art wing, it's amazing. Um, I was really thinking of, of how this town, you can't put me into context without Hopkinton and without my time spent here. I had a great day. It was really nice to meet all the students. I particularly enjoyed getting to see the art wing and uh, meeting the photography teacher and seeing all of the opportunities that the kids have here to take all these great electives um, and seeing my former classmate Josh and learning a bit more about what he does. Um, it was great talking to the students and it was great riding around town to see how much things have changed but how much the community obviously still cares about the schools and investing in kids so it was it was a great day how did it feel to be honored here tonight it was um humbling and you know it was surprising to me um but also it was really you know it was it was a great opportunity to be in such an amazing class of people and to hear what everyone has gone on to do as a historian i loved hearing more about the browns and learning about sunny's work and um, really connecting with classmates before me well, congratulations. Thank you very much. To see many pictures from the Top of the Hill ceremony, head over to seenandhopkinton.org. On the Friday prior to the Hillers football Thanksgiving game versus Ashland, the 10th annual Powder Puff football match took place between ladies in the class of 2017 and the class of 2018. The class of 2017 was the first junior class to defeat the seniors in last year's game and we're looking to become the first Hopkinton High School Powder Puff team in school history to stay perfect. On Friday, November 18th, 2016, the 10th annual Powder Puff football match took place between the class of 2017 and the class of 2018. The class of 2017 was the first junior class to defeat the seniors in last year's game and they were looking to stay perfect this year. Taylor Velasquez got things started off right for the seniors. Hand off around left side, number 33. She's got space around the left side. Up cuts the 50, the 40, the 30, cuts back middle. She the 30, the, the 20, way. the 10. Touchdown, yes, seniors! Touchdown. Velasquez takes it 60 yards to the house to make it a 6-0 game. 
Emily Mastriani converts on the extra point attempt to make it 7-0 seniors. The juniors strike back, however. Quarterback Caitlin Halloran takes it on a keeper. 21 yards to six-point land. Goes back middle, still on her feet! Touchdown, juniors! Oh, Caitlin Halloran. Caitlin Halloran, gobble, gobble! We got a keeper on left side. And it steps out of bounds. It's a big stop for the seniors. They're going right. to keep the lead. It's going to be 7-6 seniors with 9.45 to play in the half. In the second half, Caitlin Halloran gets a big run to put the juniors at the seniors' 25-yard line. And then Caroline Murphy burns right through the seniors' defense. Oh, nice move up the middle. Still on her feet. Still on her feet. Touchdown, juniors. Gobble, gobble. The conversion attempt fails, but the juniors have the 12-7 lead late in the game. Seniors had the ball with about two and a half minutes left to go. Jenny Nixon got the seniors inside the 20, and then they went back to their go-to running back, Taylor Velasquez. Taylor Velasquez right left side. She's got some room. Drives the sticks. She's got a first down and more. What's the call? What's the call? Do we have a touchdown? Touchdown, seniors! Gobble, gobble! Velasquez got to the promised land and gives the seniors back the lead. After that, they give it back to Velasquez to attempt the conversion, and it's successful. Seniors take the 14-12 lead, and that would be all they need to take home the coveted Powder Puff Championship trophy. The class of 2017 is the first class to go 2-0 in Hiller's Powder Puff football. And that'll do it for the 10th annual Powder Puff game. The seniors, for the second year in a row, the class of 2017 has won. Great game by both teams, 14 to 12. Juniors and seniors should be very proud of their efforts, and we'll see you guys for the game next year. A whole lot of great programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, December 5th at 6.30 p.m., Mary Lou Mansfield reads poems about love and the Christmas season on a new Senior View. One may see only a slip of a lady, but witness the complexity within the petals. She will be forever pressed between the pages of life. One will do well to read her book. At 7 p.m., Dan Lewis recites his original poetry on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. It appears to be spring, unless you count the harsher light from the open window. There, in the middle of the wood, another horizon, sky inside of sky. But this is only how it might be assembled, light glancing off the surfaces of impatient reason. At 8.30 p.m., learn about superbugs, the risks, and how people can protect themselves on a new physician focus. Only use them when they're really indicated. Avoid use when they're not indicated. And use appropriate, the narrowest drug. So we don't want to use a drug that's going to select out for a lot of resistance. We want to target the drug to the specific organism. On Tuesday, December 6th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 7th at 11 a.m., the State of the Town address will air. At 8 p.m., Peter Mezzett discusses the Gateway Green Project and the drought on All About Hopkinton. What we tell people to do is to build a little raised circle berm around mm. the shrub that they planted and put a hose on it and two or three gallons of water for a two-foot plant a few times uh, a week in the first two weeks and then once a week thereafter is uh -huh. not using a lot of water. On Thursday, December 8th at 6.30 p.m., Margie Wigan discusses the benefits of being creative on character matters. I make paintings, sometimes with paper. I made a menu yesterday with my counselors in the library. And at the YMCA camp, right? At the way after school. Okay. And... I feel good. On Sunday, December 11th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from December 5th will air. 
And if you want to know when all of HCAM's programs will air on our channels, head on over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know about everything going on in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view highlights from the Hopkinton Hillers Girls Volleyball State Championship run and details about the holiday festivities coming up around Hopkinton. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and as always, thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com. Smile.